Hello, today is June 4th, 2012. This is Manash Patel from IchimukuTrade.com. This is our weekly Ichimoku analysis for the currency forex market where we're going to cover all the currencies from Euro USD to Australian CAD to CAD Yen and so forth. And we'll even get into some exotic pairs too. Before we begin, this is our normal disclaimer. State this is for education use only. If you decide to take any trade at all, you're doing that at your own risk. Um, all the charts you're going to see are basically from TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade. And here are my contact details here where you can contact us at info at eiicapital.com or you can contact us at any of our um, global location offices here. Okay. You could also go to ichimukutrade.com, access our free videos on uh, more about Ichimuku's system. Uh, you could access a email alerts, our heat maps services. Facebook, Twitter, well, there's various resources out there so you could pretty much access those for free all out there. Okay, so let's begin and what we're going to do is we're first going to go to our heat map service uh, which we normally do every week. So I'm going to just adjust the screens a little and come down this way. I'm shrink this chart down so a little more. Now remember, the way it works is basically is if you got a green box, this is daily time frame, weekly. We're pretty much going to focus on daily and weekly for these uh, weekly videos because we're looking at the long-term trends and what's going on long-term, not for day trading and stuff like that. Uh, red basically means you're betting on it going down. <coughs> green means you're betting on it going up. If you see a yellow in the number, that basically means it's overextended. So if you got this right here, this is a 5, and it's red, that means it's oversold. If you have a green and a yellow uh, right here, that basically means it's overbought. Okay, and what you're looking for is basically trend type of signals. So trend signals are basically two fours and fives. And really, what you want to look for in your trading time frame is mainly twos and fours. And fours are pretty much the best high probability ones. Uh, twos are uh, less higher probability but lower risk compared to two four, fours. Okay, and fives are pretty much something that you don't really want to enter on the trading time frame. So, what I'm looking for is basically a two and a four on the trading time frame, which would be here the daily time frame, and the higher time frame to the daily is going to be weekly. So, I could have a two, four, or five. And if you look at these currencies, we're going to go for each one of them and kind of do some analysis without looking at charts to kind of see what's going on. So, <clears throat> first, we're going to go and look at the Australian pairs. Uh, if you look here on Australian pairs, uh, you got a lot of colors here that are different, which is not good at all. The one time and the colors are same here, this is basically oversold on the week, uh, the daily time frame, so that's not good, and oversold here. So there's nothing really trending as of right now as far as Australian pairs are concerned. And if you look, there's conflict between the daily and weekly. That means basically pullbacks are occurring, but uh, it's pretty much entering a consolidation range. Okay. So that's the Australian pair. Let's go to the Canada pair. If you look at the Canada pair, same thing right now. This is oversold. Oh, one thing I forgot to know is whenever you see a 5 and it's yellow, that means basically it's already trended. Uh, it was an opportunity a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago, but now the opportunity is pretty much over. But that was an opportunity that was there waiting for people uh, if you took it. Okay. If you look, there's not many opportunities right now for any of these. Uh, Canadian pairs at all, uh, just like Australian, it's pretty much in a consolidation or pullback phase. On the U.S. side, <coughs> on the U.S. side, you see a lot of fives that are basically yellow. That means a lot of the trends have existed, uh, and they're pretty much in an oversold scenario. And then the things that are not in a five, these are zeros. That means there's nothing there. And there's a couple of opportunities here, a three and a five, but they're really not a two and a four. So there's no trade sets up at all in those. Uh, but you could keep your eye on the U.S. Hong Kong dollar and the U.S. Yen, uh, maybe for possible trades in the future. But they don't look good at all. So so there's no currency right now that is is in getting ready to start a trend as of right now. If you come over to Switzy pair, you'll notice that there's a lot of conflict here between the red and the green. Uh, there's nothing here. Five basically means it's oversold here for that pair, and there's no real opportunities here for the Switzy pairs either. So we're just going to keep on going down this list. Yen pairs. Look at all the yen pairs here, and you can see they're all five. <clears throat> and yellow, that means they're basically oversold. Yen has been very, very strong, and it's pretty much in an oversold scenario. If you're trying to get in now, it's very dangerous to kind of get in now, so you need to be wait and be patient for a new trend to occur. 
uh, Singapore dollar. Nothing going on here. You can see the five to yellows, and that means basically the trend is already occurred. Now let's go to euro. This should be interesting. If you come to euro, you can see a lot of people are basically bidding on the euro going down. But if you look at the heat map, there's a lot of conflict between the daily and time, daily and the weekly, which is not good at all. Okay, so that basically means there's a lot of cons consolidation that's going on right now in the higher time frames, or there's a lot of major uh, high volatile pullbacks that are occurring. And you could see here, even on the Euro USD, it's a zero strategy on the daily, and it's a oversold scenario on the weekly. So there's no opportunity as of right now to enter a trade. If you're in a trade, you're probably, uh, depending on what time frame you're trading, if you're in a weekly, you're tightening your stops right now and protecting your profits. At least that's what you should be doing. Pound USD, sorry, pound currencies. If you look here on the pound currencies, there's no opportunities here either. Uh, so, but there's a couple of ones here which are good. Uh, there's a two here, but that's a conflict with the higher time frame. So basically, this is the counter trend trade on the pound Australian. And if you look at the other currency pairs, there's nothing really going on there. Even pound is concerned. And then lastly, well, let's go over to New Zealand pair. And New Zealand pair, there's really nothing going on at all. So if you look at all the currency pairs that's going on, there's nothing really, really out there right now. So a lot of these currency pairs are basically in a consolidation pattern or in a pullback phase. That means a lot of the trends have already occurred, and now is the time to be patient and wait for the opportunities to come to you. Okay? Okay, so now let's go to the charts. Remember, on the left-hand side is basically my daily chart. Enlarge just to make sure. And on the right hand side is basically my weekly chart. Okay. And this is a normal Ichimoku cloud setups and everything. So let's just start going for down for the currencies. Uh, let's go look at Australian CAD. And you can see here, this is a bearish trend here on Australian CAD. But this has been going for a long, long time. Over here, we're basically broke out of the cloud, so the sentiment is now bearish, and now we're pulling back up, and it looks like we're sitting there trying to get to a resistance level here of 144. But if you look at the daily time frame, we're at a resistance level right now, so this is going to be interesting to see exactly what happens here uh, or moving forward. Uh, but the major resistance level is going to be basically at 144, and at that point we could see what happens. But momentum on the weekly time frame is not good at all, even for a bearish or bullish setup. Uh, this thing, if it does sit there and tank, it's going to tank with a lot of uh, momentum to the downside. That's the only way it's going to be able to sit there and go down. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But if you look at the daily time frame, this has been trending for a long time already. Um, and now it's basically in the pullback phase. Australian Switzy, <clears throat> nothing really going on here. It just looks ugly here. Basically bounced off the cloud here, uh, going down here. And now we're at a major support at 93.42. Uh, so, and we're just kind of holding there at the support. Weekly time frame, there's nothing going on there. So there's not much to talk about there. Australian Czechoslovakian. If you look here, Australian, Czechoslovakian, nothing really going on daily, weekly at all. So we're just going to keep on moving forward. Australian DKK, nothing there either. Australian Hong Kong, uh, this is basically a nice trend downwards here. This is basically an oversold scenario for the daily time frame. And you can see from the weekly time frame here that basically we're oversold too. Uh, we're at a minor support level right now, but we could get to a major one here. But we definitely add a minor one here. And if you look backwards in time, there's a lot of little support areas. So this is one that's very, very dangerous to short right now. You really need to wait for a pullback level. The first pullback level is going to be at basically a 77.91. Second one's going to be basically at 92.53 uh, for this currency pair. Australian yen. Of course, remember all the yen pairs have been very, very strong. You could see that from the daily time frame. It's basically an oversold scenario here on the daily time frame. It's basically formed the pivot. This was a major support right there at 74.73, which it's bounced off. And now the resistance levels are going to be basically 76.57 is the minor one. The major one is going to be roughly around 79.39 for right now. Uh, Euro Nook. This is basically here. Euro Nook is basically doing nothing at all. Let's go to Euro New Zealand. Euro New Zealand right now is basically doing nothing. Its sediment did change to be bullish, and it's kind of hanging around this level here. 
which is right around here at 2851 and it's holding so far so as this thing holds at this level and then it breaks this next resistance level at 2928 this does have a possibility of starting a trend if it breaks that first level then it's going to break this next level of 3054 but if it could get past 3054 this can start a multiple time frame um, buy signal on both daily and weekly but it's got a lot to overcome so you just gotta be patient wait for it to get past all those major levels but it is holding right now 2851 so it's very interesting to see how long it'll hold that uh, and if it will pretty much start uh, some people will start buying it from this point on Australian Singapore dollar this is basically been going down 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 Singapore dollar has been very strong compared to Australian uh, this is in need of a dire pullback uh, very desperately uh, the first pullback level uh, resistance is going to be at 2677 next one's going to be basically 2748 I would not look to short this unless at least gets to 2748 uh, you need a major pullback to kind of equalize everything that's going on with this pair Australian USD Again, this is basically being a nice trend dead to the downside. Uh, if you've been in it, great. Tighten up your stops. If you haven't been in it, it's too late. And you really can't do anything until you get experience of pullback. The pullback level is basically 1.0025. And at that point, you will evaluate and basically look to sit there and reshort this thing to go down. Cat Switzy, uh, really doing nothing. It's a boring pair, so we're just going to keep on more moving forward. Cat DKK, nothing really going on there. So we're just going to keep on moving forward. CAD Hong Kong dollar. Look at this. The Hong Kong dollar has been very, very strong against the Canadian. Uh, you can see from the daily time frame, weekly too. This is desperately in need of a pullback. Uh, and the pullback level we're looking for is 67.19. For it to come right back to that once it gets there, then we'll look at re maybe reshorting this. But we have to see exactly what the charts look like when it gets there. CAD Yen. If you look at the CAD yen, this thing has been a nice trend to the downside if you were trading it. If you're not, then basically it's too late to basically short this thing. If it's basically bounced off a major, major support at 74.54 and now it needs a major pullback. The pullback level we're looking for is basically right around 78.68, which is about 300 pips higher. Uh, it's got to experience a major pullback before you can even consider looking at adding positions uh, to go, uh, new positions to go short. Uh, CAD Nuki, uh, CAD Nook, nothing really there. Uh, let's see, CAD Singapore dollar. Uh, CAD Singapore dollar, this looks like a great, great trade on uh, both the daily and weekly. Uh, and definitely, this is a trade to look at to go down here all the way down to 2138. This is one we've been in a position of. But you can see the volatility in this thing. So it's not going to be a smooth ride down. It's going to be a very volatile ride down. Uh, and you really need to sit there and think of this in terms of a weekly chart to trade this down. If you look at the daily, you're going to keep on getting stopped out, go back in, stopped out, go back in. But this is on its journey all the way down and does have a potential of moving about another two or three hundred pips downwards. So this is a gr probably the first real opportunity we've had is the CAD Singapore dollar. Um, we got let's look at these Switzy pairs. The Switzy pairs are pretty much boring. The uh, reason why Switzy just sits there and moves very slow. If you look here on the Switzy uh, yen pair, uh, this is being trending downwards. It's already too late. If you look here, most people will be viewing this as a double bottom on the weekly time frame. So a lot of people are looking to basically go long on short term time frame and try to probably look to sit there and take this up for about another 300 pips to the next resistance level um, which is around 84.74 in long term. Uh, the next resistance level really the minor one is at 82.03 and then the next one will be around 84.13 and then 84.74 so there's a lot of minor resistance levels on the way back up so if you are playing this double bottom off this 8011 uh, 80, level, uh, just be very, very careful and make sure that you don't give up your profits once you make them. Uh, let's see what else we're going to do. Um, we're going to skip some of these exotics and we'll cover different exotics every week. Uh, Euro Australian, really nothing going on at all. This is just chop chop, one big consolidation pattern, so it's not worth entertaining. Uh, Euro CAD, nothing really going on at all. Remember, the Euro, a lot of the Euro pairs, when we looked at the heat map, are pretty much in a consolidation pattern, and there's no, no real opportunity at all. U.S. Switzy, not even worth even talking about that one. Euro Czechoslovakian, look at this pair. You notice this is the, this 
come this pair right here is trending up and this is trying to get all the way back up to 26 so this is one of the euro pairs that is starting to trend upwards um, whereas the other ones are consolidating so this is one if you definitely want to look to go long euro uh, where you know which is probably a, a unique because most people are trying to short euro but if you're trying to find a pair to go long euro this is probably one right now so far as the euro Czechoslovakia. Uh, Euro DKK uh, basically is going down, down, down. Uh, if you look here, there's a major, major uh, uh, level right here at 7480. If you could break 7480, then this thing can sit there and tank even further. So that's a great opportunity to go short, believe it or not. Euro pound, this is a great trade that we were in. Uh, and look at it, it went down, 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 down. It's experiencing its first pullback level. It's at its first res minor resistance level right now, right at 81.20. Next level is going to be basically at 82.51. Uh, but this thing is still on the, on the weekly time frame, a bearish trend. So do not sit there and try to go long. If you do, you're doing a counter trend. Euro Hong Kong, this is basically being short right now. It is oversold, uh, so there's no opportunity there. It definitely needs a pullback. It needs the first purple pullback level is going to be running around uh, 9196 right now. Okay, we're continuing to go down. Euro yen, Euro yen is basically tanking on the daily time frame. Uh, again, we've got another scenario. We're getting to a double bottom, a possible double bottom here, but most people are trying to play this. Uh, the real test is going to be once it gets to about 101, 106, and see what happens around that level. If it bounces off that resistance level, then this can sit there and go lower, and that double bottom will be destroyed. However, if it keeps on going back up and penetrates 103.51, uh, that double bottom will be confirmed moving forward. Euro Mexican. Uh, I know a lot of people think, why am I looking at this one? But believe it or not, some of these exotics are great pairs to trade because there's less manipulations on them. Euro Mexican is trending on the daily time frame over on the weekly. It's basically in the cloud, so it's consolidation. But this does have a potential to get to the 18.100. So be very careful. That's nice uh, four or 500 pips you could make very fast. Euro New Zealand, there's nothing there at all. Uh, let's go Euro Singapore dollar is basically trending downwards right now it is getting into oversold scenario that's why you have all these little pullbacks that are occurring next pullback level to is going to be around 61.48 if it breaks 61.48 uh, the next uh, minor resistance level is going to be at 62.20 and the major one believe it or not it's right around 66.06 okay scrolling down I'm going to keep on going euro usd this is still going down 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 this is still bearish trending on both time frame. We are at a minor resistance level right now. If we break that resistance level, the next one's basically going to be at 27.85. And we did tweet that on Twitter today, so you could go to Twitter and look at all the different levels there. If you don't have Twitter, you uh, you could also access it through Facebook. Um, they're all interlinked together, so you could access all the information there. Pound Australian. This is basically been going uh, bullish trending for a long time. This thing's now going for its first my major pullback uh, it's, it's ever had. Uh, the first pullback level that we're looking at is about around 57.21. Next level is going to be around around 53.68. Yes, and that is close to a 400 pip gap between the sorry the support levels that I just mentioned. Pound CAD really nothing going on. It's chop chop. It's not worth entertaining our time on that one. Pound Switzy. Nothing really going on here at all. Bullish trending here on the daily. It's going for its first major pullback. Uh, and you don't know where really it's going to stop, but it may stop right around right around 45.58. But you really don't know. But either way, this thing is not moving much, and it gives you this one gives you 200 pips and probably a two-week time span. So it's not even worth entertaining to look at. Uh, pound Hong Kong dollar. This has been a great currency pair to play short. It's at its pretty much double bottom scenario here. A lot of people are looking at whether it forms a double bottom. I'm not sure, uh, but definitely, and we know one thing: it needs a pullback. Uh, pullback level to about 12, comma sorry, 12.1825 is needed. And if it actually pulls all the way back up to here, a lot of people will think this is a double bottom. Uh, so they sit there and this will probably end up being a double one and enter a consolidation pattern. Pound yen, just like all the yen pairs are oversold. Uh, again, this is another pair here. This is in desperate need of a pullback. 
uh, before it can resume its downward trend. Uh, 125.29 is a level uh, that's a major pullback level. Uh, the minor ones are going to be 122.47 and 124.81 moving forward. Uh, can you keep on going? Did I miss one? Nope. Pound yen. We, we just covered pound yen. Pound New Zealand. Nothing really going on here. Uh, this is basically a trend here on the daily time frame. It's experiencing pullback right now. The key levels are going to be basically 110 and then 1 1.9842 are going to be the major levels for this to hold. If it doesn't, this thing will sit there and start tanking going forward. Pound Singapore dollar. Uh, nothing really going on, just consolidating right now. But I would be very, very careful on this one. This can start a trend to the downside. If it could break 9,600, this can be an opportunity to go short for at least 300 pips to retest the pivot low and then possibly break below that moving forward. Pound USD, this has been a great trade if anyone that's taking this. Uh, and it's gone down, 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 down. And if you look at it, we're basically at the double bottom now, which basically bounced off the major support. Whether we form a double bottom, we don't know, but it definitely needs a, uh, a pullback. So it probably will be a double bottom moving forward. Um, let's go into New Zealand CAD. New Zealand CAD, this is a bearish trend here. Pull going down, down, down. We pull back to a major uh, resistance level at 78, 78, 70. Uh, if it basically breaks here, the next level is going to be 79, 55, and then 80, 18. 80, 18 is the basically line in the sand, which has to hold in order for this to remain bearish, trending on a long term basis. Pounds, uh, sorry, New Zealand, Switzy. Another pair that's boring. Uh, pretty much all the Switzy pairs are boring, so we'll just have to sit there and start ignoring them at one point. Uh, New Zealand yen, just like all the yen pairs, it's overextended and a double bottom scenario too, so not worth even talking about. And it definitely needs a pullback uh, to even look at even trades moving forward. New Zealand, Singapore dollar. Uh, this has been going down, down, down. Looks really, really good. However, this needs a pullback. The first pullback level we're going to be looking at is 98.74. Next one's going to be at 99.73. So those are the pullback levels that we're looking at right now. Uh, New Zealand US dollar. This is basically be trending on the daily. Weekly, you got a double bottom scenario. Just like majority of the yen pairs. This is not yen though. It needs a pullback, but we'll have to see. But this thing is definitely ranging right now on a long term basis in big, wide, long ranges. So it looks like a trend here on the daily, but it's basically a consolidation pattern on the higher time frame right now. Um, <clears throat> US CAD. US CAD is just breaking for the roof right now, just going, going straight, 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 straight up. However, uh, it definitely needs a pullback now. We had a major resistance, so if you're not in this, don't get in it. I would basically, if you're a counter trend trader, I'll be looking for opportunities to basically go the other way on this, where you bet on US CAD basically going down. Uh, US Switzy, uh, been going up, 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 slowly going up. Um, there's nothing there right now, but it's basically trending on both the daily and weekly. And then let's keep on going down. US yen, nothing really going on. Daily is trending to the downside. A basically big consolidation pattern here on the weekly. So nothing really going on as far as US yen is concerned right now. Here's one of my favorite pairs, US Mexico peso. Look at US Mexico peso. This thing's taking off on the daily time frame. Broke for the resistance last week, kind of holding right around that resistance you broke through and trying to basically take that resistance, turn it into support. So if this thing can hold this week, right around this level right now, 2236, this thing does have a potential move into the whole new next leg. But it's going to be interesting to see exactly where it ends up at by the end of the week. U.S. Singapore dollar, this is basically strong. You could see all the U.S. pairs as we looked at the heat map. They were overextended on the daily, and you could see that from the daily and then also in the weekly too. Uh, so there's nothing, no trades right now, uh, but if you're in a trade, you need to tighten up your stops. Okay, that's it for this week. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. You could basically go to our website, itchingliquidtrade.com, access in there for free videos there. Uh, also, uh, you could email us or contact us at any of our global location phone numbers here. I'll see you next week. Thank you.